Good afternoon, everybody. Matt Parker here with Tim May inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center, and it is the early National Signing Day here on December 21st, 2022. Ohio State just welcomed in 19 commits, prospects, however you want to call them, into signees into the Ohio State football program with uh, more on the way because the early signing period's three days. Today's just the first day of them. Um, we just heard some comments from Coach Ryan Day about the status of Ohio State recruiting, how Wednesday has gone. And uh, Tim, I think one of the first things that I feel like we should talk about is kind of the, the, the negativity, the negative aura. I know we, before we started recording, we said, well, let's start on the positives. But Well, no, I mean, the bottom line is you've got who you've got. You know, uh, in this day and age with everything going on in the recruiting realm, and by the way, a lot of shenanigans were going on in the recruiting realm 50 years ago too, you know what I mean? But you, you have to take, you know, you have to take stock of who you got, not who you didn't get, not who slipped out the, out the back door, not who left out the front door and said, see you later. What you, what you take stock in is who you've got uh, uh, inked to a national letter of intent, which I think is good. I think means they might be here for one year. You never know about yeah. the transfer portal anymore, yeah. right? I don't we'll know get when, into that too. I don't even know. Actually, uh, you know, uh, Quinn Ewers left after just being around for, you know, a season. A season. He was here in the fall. Exactly. So who knows how long you can be? But but you have to. Uh, it's not putting a spin on it. You've got who you've got at this point. You can't be pining away about who who you didn't get or who, you know, maybe inducements here or whatever there, which. Uh, as uh, as I asked Ryan Day, is anybody you feel like the NCAA is even looking into this uh, inducement situation that name, image, and likeness has turned into in some other places? He goes, he doesn't get the idea that anyone's looking into it yeah. from an NCAA standpoint. It seemed pretty so, confident. So it is too. what it is. Ohio State is not truly engaged in in that kind of stuff, uh, at least yet, you know. Right. But uh, because who knows what the rule, what the law of the land is anymore? But yeah, the bottom line is, I mean. Uh, you, you look at who you got. I mean, the four receivers they got in this class, I think anybody would take this combination of four receivers in one class, led by Brandon Ennis, a uh, young man who m made a commitment and stuck with it, et cetera. Uh, just run them down, Noah Rogers, run them down the line. I mean, this is a pretty impressive class when you look at it as a whole. Yeah, would they like one more defensive lineman? Absolutely. Uh, did they put a, a premium on recruiting offensive linemen in this class knowing some of the vacancies that are going to show up next year just in the roster, much less in the starting lineup. Absolutely, they did. Luke Montgomery has been committed to this class for a long time, and he obviously signed today. And there's a guy that could possibly compete for a lot of time, if not a starting job, at one of the tackle spots this coming season. So there's a lot to look at this class that I think is uh, quite on the upside. It's not putting a spin on it because it is what it is at this point. Absolutely. And by the way, Call it, the, call it the early signing day, just, just still, yeah. as you and I talked about on my podcast this week. By yeah. the way, you did a great job on that podcast, oh, too. Thank you. Uh, what a misnomer that is because the bulk of your class <clears throat> almost anywhere, at least among the major elite powers in college football uh, for 2023, is being signed today, tomorrow, or the next day. Right, and it's, it's worth noting that, yes, they still call it the quote-unquote early signing period, but as Tim said, uh, People sign most of the class, if not the entirety of the class, signs today, December 21st. Uh, but Ryan Day made a point that February 1st, which is when the quote unquote actual signing day is, is a, uh, well, we still got some time, but I wanted to get into- Second signing day. Yes, I wanted, I wanted to get into, you kind of mentioned and went a little bit in detail about it, the four man wide receiver class that Ohio State's got with Brandon Ennis out of American Heritage down there in South Florida. Yeah. And then you have Noah Rogers out of Rollsville in the Rally area, North Carolina. Yeah. Carnell Tate, who's a Chicago native, but played his senior season down at IMG Academy yeah. down there in South Florida. And then it rounds out with Bryson Rogers, who played at Wiregrass Ranch down there in the Tampa area. However, he's an Ohio kid. He's right. from Warren, Ohio, has family still there. This is this wide receiver class is, it, it, People cannot get used to to what Brian Hartline does on the recruiting trail. Yeah. Because once you get used to something, you kind of start to take it for granted. And what's happening on the recruiting trail with Ohio State and what Brian Hartline has been doing. And then, you know, you've got a couple of guys like Keenan Bailey goes down there and recruits guys as well when Kevin Wilson, head coach now at Tulsa, but very much invested in Ohio State recruiting when he was here, obviously. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they all played an, an important part in landing with – arguably is the best wide receiver class in the country once again. Yeah, and you know what's interesting about the, just the wide receiver room, the evolution it has taken from 
four or five years ago when we were all, we were all writing and talking and raving about the three amigos who stuck around, uh, Paris, uh, Paris Campbell, uh, Terry McLaurin, and uh, Johnny Dixon. Mm -hmm. Those guys were almost lifers here, you know, four and five year players who developed in this system, um, you know, obviously under Zach Smith and stuff back then, and um, the way they just escalated. But now it's like, <laughs> look at Marvin Harrison Jr. and Mech Agbuka, the way they stepped up in their second years and became a uh, Julian Fleming finally passed. It looks like the injury bug to a certain extent. Uh, if in fact, the injury, there is such a thing as an injury bug, but he had it. I think uh, in this building there definitely is. Uh, exactly, but the bottom line is, uh, they're playing a lot earlier and they're getting guys with the caliber of playing ability to play a lot earlier. And this class speaks to that. And, uh, you know, all of these guys have their upside. I mean, it depends on what highlight reel you want to turn on, right? Right, right. But they can all, they can all catch the ball, number one, for a receiver. Yeah, yeah. Number two, they're all, they're all blessed with, with what I call high end, if not even better speed, depending on who you're looking at. And then number three, they are in high school, and high school is a different realm than college. They got a lot of yak, the yards yeah, after catch. absolutely. And uh, more and more, the way these guys like, to, you know, Ohio State and a lot of the other, uh, well, almost everybody now likes to get try to create putting their receiver on an island with a quarterback who's on an island and run these wide screens or run these, like, quick hitches. You know, there's a quick hitch of infamy against Ohio State in the Michigan game yeah. and let them make the play. All four of these guys seem to have that capability or that, that physical ability. So I'm impressed by what I've seen from these guys. And you mentioned that, you know, these younger guys, they get this playing time earlier and earlier. Well, there's a reason for that. It's because the spots that they're filling, those guys are going to the those NFL. Guys are, uh, yeah, it's and, the conveyor belt. Yeah, and when, and when that's a problem, problem if you want to call it even that that's that's a good sign for Ohio State I mean look yeah. at look at um, the odds favorite right now to win offensive rookie of the year in the NFL right now and that's Garrett Wilson who's been in this building and Chris Olave has been no slouch no not at all not by any means yeah. but, Let's, or, but back go to ahead. these guys but yeah I mean you can see you can see a couple of these guys making a step up next next you know as early as this coming season because they're going to need them from a depth standpoint but there are other guys in that room other than the three guys I named who are also looking to make a step up you know absolutely that's why y'all you know in this age you, you got to keep your eye on the transfer portal but uh with every position but it just seems like receivers understand the schooling they're getting here under Brian Hartline and the Ryan Day offense uh is quite valuable to leading them to where they ultimately want to go, which is not, well, everybody like a, a great name, image, and likeness contract, mm -hmm. obviously, but they all want to get to the league. Not the, they're not so much lured by the NIL as they are the NFL, is I guess the best way of putting it. It's all alphabet soup, folks. Yes. That's what we do here. We play alphabet soup. We like alphabet soup. One of the names, I don't want to do a, a position by position right. breakdown. We're not going to do that. But one last person on the offensive side of the ball that I want to talk about with you is offensive tackle Luke Montgomery. Uh, he's a four-star prospect out of Finley, Ohio, just about mm, an hour and change northwest of here. Where Maybe. Ben Roethlisberger was from. Yeah, absolutely. Um, although he played at Miami of Ohio, well, not Ohio he State. He didn't play quarterback till his senior year in high school because I think the coach's son was a starting quarterback there in Finley. Well, and the transfer and, portal didn't and, exist. Yeah, and Ohio State got kind of got in on him late from the from the standpoint of offering him as a quarterback because they hadn't really seen him play much quarterback, and uh, so he took his talent south to Miami of Ohio and. Uh, the rest is NFL history. I, d I didn't think we were going to get a, well, a lesson there, up. but yeah. I did bring it up. Yeah. But uh, focusing on, on Luke Montgomery, this is a guy who's you know 6'5", pushing 6'6", six, six in the height range. If I had to, the, the last measurement I saw, it said 275 in the weight, but uh, I, I've seen Luke pretty recently, about a month ago, and if that's 275, that's the biggest 275 I've ever seen. This is a guy that, short of, <laughs> short of Ohio State, flat out saying, and by Ohio State I mean Ryan Day, short of them flat out saying, you know, we expect Luke to make an immediate impact. That's that's kind of the feel that I got when Ryan was talking about him Absolutely. at the press conference yeah, today. Yeah, and, and, and I, I like him, Luke, because I was just having these visions of him as you were talking. You, know, like, you go down there before, the, before some of these games start and you're down there on the field. I think he was at every game this year. Maybe I'm wrong. No, uh, no, but, you're spot but on. It reminds me of when I go down there and occasionally I knew that Orlando Pace was in the house. All you had to do was kind of go like this and you'd see Orlando Pace because his head was up here, you know? 
And uh, Luke is kind of like that. I mean, he's kind of just, he has jumped out at you on the sideline at Ohio State games in that regard. And the smile he always seems to have on his face just tells you, man, this guy loves being around football, loves playing football, loves playing sports. As, as uh, um, Ryan Day was talking about, just watching him play basketball, you can see his quick feet, et cetera. They, and, you know, he gets, into Mick, gets in with Mick Marotti for six or eight months before next season starts because he's going to be an early in role. Uh, matter of fact, that's almost a wrong term now because almost every – seems like almost everybody of repute enrolls, you know, in January now yeah. uh, with a few exceptions and stuff. Uh, Dallin Hayden didn't, but Dallin Hayden came on quick. But the bottom line is uh, uh, he just looks the part, and you can see how much bigger – you can see how much bigger he's going to be after a year of working under this under this system. Well, we're laying down some some turf here. I think at, they're, at I the think Woody they're working on a long jump pit <laughs> over there, and uh, it looks like they're getting it ready to pour concrete. I hope that's not what they follow up with, because yeah. you'd hate to land in a, in a long jump pit that's covered with concrete. That's that's not what but you that's want. That's another story for another day. That's we'll, right. We'll follow up on that. And yeah. get back to you. Yeah, follow Letterman Row for more on as uh, Ohio State is building a concrete long jump pit inside the <laughs> indoor here at Woody. Allegedly. At Woody Hayes. Allegedly, of course. But uh, going back to Luke, I think one of the things that impresses me so much about his tape is the athleticism and the explosion that he has in this athleticism. Yeah. Out of Finley High School, they really like to spread the ball around like most teams do anymore, especially now at the high school level where some of that college game is infiltrated in the, in the preps level. But looking at, at him with his size, he does exactly what you want an Ohio State offensive lineman to do. They run the screens up there at Finley. And who is out there on the front line? Luke Montgomery. You need uh, any kind of ISO or kind of combination block where the gaps, running backs get to choose the gaps. Well, who's making those blocks to reach the second level? Luke Montgomery. This is a guy, and well, he's also, not just the only lineman they're using. Right. Well, they did get four of them, and uh, no, I'm talking about Finley. Oh, not yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, just to to clarify, I know, I know. Well, but, for the viewers but, at home. But, but let's touch on something we talked about before we in, in our what do, what do you call it our pre our pre video uh, talk our production Luke, meeting. In my opinion, Luke Montgomery is that maybe that uh, crown that crown jewel on. What they signed seven guys, I think, today from the state of Ohio. Yep. And you and I were talking about that before, and that stands out because, because um, I want to talk about a couple of other of those guys if we can maybe stay in that realm for a second. Absolutely. Uh, but like I told you, you know, when when uh, Ryan Day got got elevated to the head coach permanently, one of the first things he said in his press conference, you know, with Urban Meyer was sitting there and Gene Smith was sitting there, one of the first things he says they want to start, they want to build from the state of Ohio out. I mean, that's, that was a paraphrase, but there had been some criticism of, of the, maybe the Urban Meyer uh, era recruiting classes. They didn't, they didn't give enough importance to some of the players in Ohio. Yep. I mean, I think they went out and got tremendous classes. So I don't, I've never believed in the dotted line meaning much of anything, mm -hmm. except when you're talking about it later, right? From Absolutely. From a pride standpoint. Yeah. But what they've got seven guys in this class uh, from the state of Ohio and uh, I think that speaks a lot about Ohio State having an emphasis on it. And number two, the state of Ohio producing some players like Arvell Reese, the kid from from Cleveland Glenville. That pipeline, you turned it back on as we talked about on my podcast. And boy, that wasn't a drip, man. That was a gusher. This kid is a football player. He reminds me of sort of, in a funny way, of sort of the defensive ends that Georgia used to have way back about 15, 20 years ago. Just and not that he's not necessarily going to play that, but just hard, uh, long, uh, quick and fast uh, and raw, just to, just wants to get after you. Well, a guy that he reminds me of. You understand what I'm saying? I hear you. And I was just going to name drop a guy that has worn the scarlet and gray that reminds me a lot, that Arvell Reese reminds me a lot of, and that's Ryan Shazier. Yeah. He has that nose for the football. Doesn't matter if the play is coming toward him or coming uh, going away from him. He's yeah. going to have his nose on the football. I mean, yeah. those are the kind of players in this Jim Knowles defense that they want. They want that aggression. How many times this year have we heard about, oh, we're going to be aggressive. we got to be tough. Well, you get a kid like Arville Reese, yeah. that's exactly what you want. He fits the bill. To, to stay inside the, the state of Ohio, another, another prospect that I'm really high on that I think is a great get for Ohio State, especially for cornerbacks coach Tim Walton in his first cycle with Ohio State, is a four-star cornerback Jermaine Matthews out of Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, Cincinnati, Ohio, Winton Woods Winton High School. Winton Woods, man. 
also the high school of Mayan Williams, as a lot of folks know. Um, but this is a guy, we've talked a little bit about these these coaches wanting to create the matchups of wide receiver cornerback on an island. Well, you know what? Ohio State, they now have their island quarterback, uh, yeah. cornerback in this class with Jermaine Matthews. And, and, and let's segue, let's dovetail that into the guy that you know I'm fired up about. Oh, yeah. And I was going to ask Ryan, but I'd already asked three or four questions. Yeah. I'd already more than gotten my share is, hey, you know, you and I and maybe a couple other guys, maybe one other person in this room, we're the only ones who have ever been to Waxahachie, Texas. <laughs> But Calvin Simpson Hunt, the, you know, like we were talking about Ohio State losing some players uh, during the process. Well, they flipped Calvin Simpson Hunt from, from Texas, Texas Tech, Tech to yeah. Ohio State, just like Lincoln Keenholz, the one quarterback they, they got, uh, uh, disavowed his uh, commitment to Washington and committed to Ohio State when there became that opening, that urgent need, really, for a quarterback in this, in this class. But they were on him anyway. They were already in on him. But Calvin Simpson Hunt is one of those guys who – Man, you watch his video from like a sophomore, and now you watch his video as a senior. Number one, he's gotten bigger. He looks like he's gotten faster, but he also fits the bill of what you're talking about Jim Knowles wants in this defense, right? Absolutely. It's just that it's that one-on-one -on -one matchup yeah. that Ohio State, A, wants, that it will create, but it also not only wants but expects to win. And yeah. I think they found two winners in this class with Jermaine Matthews and Calvin Simpson Hunt. And it's worth noting that right now, those are the only cornerbacks in this class because now that four-star Cedar Grove High School cornerback uh, Kay and Lee has flipped his commitment from Ohio State to Auburn, expectedly to sign his national letter of intent with Auburn today. Now you're looking at, at a two-man cornerback class when you really, quite honestly, wanted four. Yeah, yeah. So you can build depth in this secondary. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that's tough to deal with on signing day. But a lot of schools, you know, you have to do that because – like I just pointed out, Ohio State didn't. Who's the who's the safety? Ohio State didn't quit recruiting. It was going to Alabama. Caleb Downs. Caleb Downs. I mean, you got to stay on these guys. I yeah. mean, There's a reason you're recruiting them, uh, and everybody knows that reason. And so they're you know the big time schools are recruiting most of these guys too. And and it is a tug of war, and it comes down to whimsy, sometimes, but it also comes down to man, I really liked what I heard last from this guy, mm -hmm. and so they're going to sign with that guy. But uh, like I said, you don't you don't spend a lot of time over spilt milk. Now you look maybe Ohio State looks in the portal and see if there is a uh, capable, for example, corner uh, in the portal to maybe fill if they feel like there is a, a quota they needed to fill there, whether it be three or four. You look in that regard, but uh, it is what it is. But like you can't be crying too much about two of the guys you got. That's for sure. Absolutely. You made a mention about this uh, this. This, this theoretical tug of war that you know Ohio State plays with everybody else in, in the country and kind of just you know we've taken pretty great stock of the tug guys of war they've taken we've taken pretty pretty considerable stock I think of the guys that Ohio State got today on the national signing day but a yeah, couple but I of, wouldn't call it tug of war it's almost like fisticuffs there you go <laughs> well uh, we'll make sure to change the name but a couple of, I'd be remiss as, as the recruiting analyst here at Letterman Road to not talk about the guys that Ohio State didn't get and kind of that impact of what it means looking forward and some of those names include you know Keon Keeley edge rusher committed and signed to Alabama we've talked about Caleb Downs the five-star safety out of Mill Creek High School down there in Georgia uh, Mateo Ungalele, the younger brother of DJ Ungalele, who's now in the transfer portal, but Mateo signed uh, and committed to Oregon on December 21st. And those three names right there of Mateo, Keon, and Caleb, those are all guys that would fit the bill for Ohio State. But for whatever reason, you know, a lot of people want to throw out NIL or this and that and stuff like that. But for whatever reason and whatever the reason is, it doesn't necessarily matter because they didn't go to Ohio State. And yeah. that's that's the problem. Yeah, maybe that's yeah that's the problem, but it happened. I mean, you roll from it, right? And uh, dude, I, I mean, there's a long list of guys who've come in here, who come into Ohio State and have gone other places. I mean, look at Alabama; has lost several people to the transfer portal this year. Yeah. One of which was a five star, if I remember correctly. Texas A&M has lost 20 people to the transfer portal. That was essentially their entire recruiting class last year. Bottom line is. Uh, just because they're there now, who knows where they're going to be in a couple of years if they don't find immediate satisfaction in paradise where they end up. But it is what it is right now. The, uh, uh, you know, this isn't casting any aspersions. Uh, bottom line is there are all kinds of ways for schools to make themselves look attractive. 
Ohio State has continued to kind of toe the line about we're into developing players. We're into giving you a pathway to the NFL. We're into giving you a pathway to play early if you're worthy of it. Uh, and then, you know, there's no doubt a lot of Ohio State players, even though there's been a lot of talk about the na name, image, and likeness situation, uh, the collectives, et cetera, around Ohio State, there's still a lot of, a lot of uh, upperclassmen players who've stuck, you know, well, they had sticking around in part of it. It became law a year ago uh, that you could do this. But the bottom line is they have benefited greatly from the NIL, just not necessarily coming in were they induced by the NIL prospect. Absolutely. And uh, so, and that's not saying that played a role in anything because Oregon's a high-profile program, for example. Uh, right on down, everybody you named is a high-profile program. But I'm telling you, anybody can see this. And Ohio State has gotten some really nice transfer portal players over the last several years, including Trey Sermon. We set the single season, excuse me, single game rushing record in Ohio State history in that uh, uh, Big Ten championship win over Northwestern. I think it was Northwestern, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my brain's got a million of those in it, you know what I mean? Uh, Jonah Jackson, uh, who's playing in the NFL right now, I think, for Justin Fields, of course. Justin Fields, obviously. That's a. That's a uh, legacy game for this game coming up against Georgia, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. I mean, Ohio State has benefited greatly from the Chip Trainum, who ended up being the running back of choice in the game against uh, Michigan uh, three weeks ago. Obviously, went to Arizona State, was a running back, transferred here to become a linebacker, and suddenly they needed him because of injury, et cetera, this year. And he stepped back to running back. Next, next thing you know, he was the guy in the, yeah. in the game. Now, he wasn't enough kind of, of the guy because they had a lot of – you know, as we well know, but the bottom line is if you can pick and choose from the transfer portal and find those guys who fit exactly what you need, wow, you know, and that's what's coming. And Ryan Day pointed it out. Uh, I don't know why I'm going down this rabbit hole because it is a rabbit hole. But, the bottom, but more and more schools now, if – I mean, look at what Colorado is probably going to be doing in the transfer portal realm. Absolutely. Because of Deion Sanders now being the head coach. Look what look what Lincoln Riley did immediately upon getting the job at Oklahoma, and the 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 transfer portal mecca he turned that into. Yeah. Into. Yeah. Uh, more and more, it's kind of like instead of the JUCO route, you're going, hey, who's available in the portal? And there, I think there's over a thousand guys. Yeah. Who got into the portal this year? There's a good chance half of those guys might not end up somewhere. Oh, I think probably more than half won't even have a home. Yeah, but there are some valuable guys there that just were antsy about being developed he, over here, and they want to go over there where there's an immediate shot at getting to play, et cetera. So everything is evolving right now. It's evolving so fast. It's, uh, it's kind of like global warming times four yeah. for college football. Yeah. Because college football and, and, and the evolution in college football into these realms was at a glacial pace, that is for sure until the last couple of years. So what I'm getting to here is, you know, Ohio State has got some, maybe some hard, fast decisions to make in the next couple of years about where it wants to go in that regard. But Ryan Day was still adamant that he wants this to be a destination for players to number one, fit the culture. Uh, number two, come into it knowing they're pretty good, but will be developed. And number three, hey, look at the history. If you get developed here and pay attention, do your, uh, your P's and Q's and dot your I's and everything, cross your T's yeah. and cross your F's, your small F's. Right, right. Uh, you can get to the National Football League. And, uh, but we'll see how that goes. And my point is, they still got the Mickens kid today. Yeah, Joshua Mickens, a four-star edge rusher out of Lawrence Central in Indianapolis, Indiana. And hadn't publicly committed until today, correct? That's correct. Had been committed to where? He was a former LSU commit and then uh, took two visits to Ohio State in November, was an unofficial visitor for the uh, Indiana game on November 12th and then made his official visit for the game against Michigan. And shortly after that, he decommitted from LSU and all signs pointed toward the Buckeyes with yeah. that one. So is anybody upset about that? I, you understand what I'm saying? I hear you. I think it's more about, and you and I have kind of beating around the bush talking about this on this show right Remember now. Remember when everybody wanted DJ Ungalele as their, as their next quarterback? Yeah. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. looks like he's been beaten out finally Yeah. at, at uh, Clemson. He's in the transfer portal. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, what goes around comes around. <laughs> well, uh, what what say you uh, we kind of make the show go around, come around. We'll put a, we'll put a pin in this one as yeah. it is National Signing Day. 
Wednesday, December 21st. Let me ask you one quickie before we finish. Go ahead. Who's the one player, the one player in this class that you're excited about seeing play for the Buckeyes and maybe sooner rather than later? Hmm. I think we talked about this on my podcast a little bit too. We did, but I can give you a different answer okay. because it's going to be in the unorthodox way of how we're going to see him, okay. at least to start. And that's the linebacker from Cleveland Glenville, Arvell Reese. He's just got that physicality about him that is so hard to keep someone like that off of the field. Ohio State saw that a little bit this year with freshman linebacker C.J. Hicks. Yep. This is a guy who would fly down the field on special teams, on, on kickoff coverage and on punt. He was on every single special team that you could think of. And would go down the field, make tackles or make the blocks to set things up for returners and stuff like that. And I think Arvell Reese might have some of that same ability once yeah. he gets to Ohio State. Yeah. So that's, that's a guy that I'm just really excited for. I'm going to go back to a guy that you talked about on my podcast, but I really like this guy because I really like watching his video. He's a guy I've already talked about, Calvin Simpson Hunt. Yep. Because he, he just looks really athletic. He looks very comfortable one-on-one with somebody because – Let's, you know, we're talking about high school video, but as Ryan Day pointed out, Waxahachie is in a big time competitive uh, district down in Texas of yeah. uh, football. You know, there are, there are no shortcuts down there uh, in, in that league he's in. And he just looks like a guy that could compete right off the bat. You'd like to see him get a little bit bigger, obviously, all these guys. So that's what, in my mind, would kind of keep him a, a little bit in the background to begin with. But uh, uh, there is a guy that. When we talk about maybe some of the guys who they didn't get for one reason or another, there's a guy that they got who is seems like his upside is not even close to where it can be. Um, he's not even close to that upside, and has just you just watch him progress from a sophomore to a senior, and you just kind of go, wow, this guy might have big big time written all over him. It's just uh, it's like an airplane takeoff, right? Just keep building keep, up speed, keep slowly climbing. V1, which is minimum takeoff speed, and then V2, pull back, rotate, and that's where I expect him to do at Ohio State. There you go. Well, there you have it, folks. For Tim. I don't know why I got in, we got into that. But <laughs> we uh, brought it up. It was a little elongated, but nonetheless, uh, for Tim May, now, do you, do you feel kind of left out that I didn't call you the 40 year vet, like, no. like Spencer says? No, it doesn't, you know what? It doesn't bother me at all. Anybody can see I'm old, number one, number two, I'm 68. <laughs> Number three, I retired once and then came, got, got dragged back into this by Letterman Row. Totally enjoyed it, totally enjoyed my podcast, totally enjoy meeting young people like yourself. And I wanted to ask you before we get done, this is the first time you've covered recruiting, you know, because yeah. you, like anybody else, you're just looking to, to, to get a niche in this, uh, in this business as a reporter, you know, sports reporter. But what was, what was the one thing that stood out about this process uh, obviously, you got help along the way from some of your buddies who pointed you in the right direction. Uh, matter of fact, former Letterman Row guy, uh, Jeremy Birmingham, uh, who I totally appreciate him uh, taking you under his wing to a certain extent because this is a weird, a weird yeah, part of the business is. to be in. Yeah, right? yeah. What, what, I guess what stood out to you? Uh, what have you learned most about recruiting in your last couple of months? Well, to, uh, to, to really quickly, I did want to touch upon you mentioned Jeremy Birmingham and a lot of our subscribers and folks that watch our YouTube videos you know still watch a lot of the things that Berm does and yeah I'm very thankful for him and stuff like that but as as far as it goes to what I've learned about recruiting is that you could be told one thing in five minutes and then five minutes later it's the complete 180 that that you told yeah. uh, that you had that you had heard so it's it's all about much like any kind of reporting it's all about being on on your P's and Q's making the phone calls staying active, building up the, the communication and the relationship and stuff like that. So I don't necessarily think it's really any too much different. Um, I think that's the recruiter of the hour right behind us, Brian Hartline, by the way. Exactly. Um, but uh, to, to put a point into it, it's just it never stops. It never sleeps, especially with the invention of the Internet, right? Yes. It just never stops. It never sleeps. Yeah. But uh, I, well, I like those guys. I mean, Brian Hartline right, walking behind us. Think about the amount of hours that these guys put into this. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, you've got other people helping you now uh, along the way, which, you know, but just think about your, your number one, you got Georgia on your mind. You're trying to beat their zone defense or their man to man or whatever they're going to do. Flip side of it is you got to keep calling guys because you never know who's talking to them. Like when Ryan Day was in there talking today about uh, just the process of just 
getting a commitment and then does that guy stick to his commitment because you don't know who they're talking to once yeah like with you once you hang up the phone with them they're talking to some other maybe recruiting guru yeah or they might be talking to a head coach who you know an hour later he has swayed this guy you know yeah. or the assistant coach it's just an ongoing never ending 24 7 process and it, what a I don't know what a whirlpool it is right now, my man. It's it's some fun, but uh, I think I think what is going to end is we're gonna we're gonna put a pin in this show. Uh, December twenty first, National Signing Day for Tim. Hi, Matt. Thanks for joining us for a, a rapid reaction, a practice report uh, presented by Byers Automotive, and uh, I think that's going to do it for us here inside the Woody Hayes Athletic Center. Peach Bowl is ten days away from where we stand right now. Michigan, yeah. 339, 338 days away, somewhere uh, in there. Yeah, I don't know about that one. Uh, but anyway. I can't count that high. I run out of toes. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe, of course. Be a friend, tell a friend, and uh, we'll catch you next time.